Well, Shabbat Shalom, all of you, and, uh, well, or maybe only to myself. Oh, by the way, let's just get this uh, fixed. That's a problem with the program where you need to enter it to actually get the settings. <laughs> um, so, I was thinking of doing uh, some reading on Melito. Um, or they actually call him Militon here, but uh, it should be... I guess that's one way of I guess of saying his name, but usually it's Melito, and he's one of the guys that you know is very interesting to read. And again, uh, sadly, we have lost a lot of his writings, uh, so we only have fragments here and there. At least uh, you know who knows what is coming forward in the future. And let's see if I can find the fathers and. Oh, that's a very special, special, uh oh, special. Uh, okay, Guillaume. Of course, should have prepared this, but anyway. Um, so, but we we will get there, I guess, you know. And uh, number six, and and then we have. We have one of these, oh, oh, there we go. And we have uh, Melito, Melito. So he's one of the guys that also believed in a thousand year reign on on this earth. And, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, oh, he's Judaizing and all that, you know, in regards to the Roman Catholic Church, you know, the whole riding the beast, uh, being led by the man of 666, which of course is the is known by most people as the Pope. Anyway, the Roman Caesar and Roman, you know, well the 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 high priest in regards to Pontifex Maximus, um, the king of heathendom, you know, and apparently he thinks himself to be, you know, head of the Christian Church as well. And that was, of course, the things that the Protestants protested again against, which apparently they don't know anything in regards of our days. All well, most of the people, anyway, don't know any anything in regards of what the Scripture says in regards of of uh, you know the Roman beast and um, and the hall and the little horn. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, so this is like Spicilicium Syriacum. I guess it must be from Syria or something like that. 1855. Um, now, of course, Melito lived in the, I think it was the sixth, second century. Um, but, you know, there might be more interesting things in regards of the Syrian, uh, where Rome might not have had that, uh, that greater hand. Um, but of course, not to say that they haven't had their hand in the cookie jar. Um, let's see here. Uh, selected in notes, moved and numbered. The four following extracts are taken from one of the Syriac manuscripts brought from Nitria, now in the British Museum, number 1250 F77-77, written in AD... 562, as I've already given a description of this manuscript in my Corpus Ignatium, Ignatium. sounds Latin again, you know, it's the uh, same thing in regards to the, anyway, uh, page 352, it is needless for me to repeat it. And it goes in in regards to number two, and we have number two uh, just after by Meliton. Of a Meliton, Bishop of Sardis. I'm not sure why they call him Meliton here, you know, but usually it's uh, Melito that he's known by. Um, anyway, page 52 of Sardis, the Syriac has of Sardian, which is the genitive, genitive, genitive of the Greek retained in the translation. Of Sardis, the Syriac has Sardion. Oh, well. It doesn't really say in regards of anything in regards of the Militon. Um, um, you know, it, it's it actually starts in regards to Specilicium Syriacum, 1855, PS and uh, dot, 
and it says Melito, and it says uh, uh, slash slash, no, no, not slash, line line or something like that, and then it says fragments. Um, I think these are some of the things that is not released in the in the collection. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that is not found in the. Uh oh, we have a problem with the connection. Shouldn't be a problem. The network is poor. Well, shouldn't be. This is full signal and all that, you know. The the network status is poor. Ah. Uh, well, what are we going to do with that? Why is it uploading? So maybe, maybe it's try to follow up or something like that. But it should have full signal. And maybe I should actually, in regards, but it, you know, it should have more than enough to actually. Uh, I don't understand why it would have any problems. I'll just move here a little and see if we can get a little better. And it says it has full signal. So, um, the network status is poor. Yeah, I have, you know, pretty much understood that. So I try to reconnect. Well, um, it's typical. Let's try to reconnect then. I think we are running again, but it still says the network. It, it it's really weird because you know according to the test, you know I should have more than enough upload and. Uh, yeah, I pretty much got that. Typical the program. Um, maybe it's just YouTube, you know. Uh, I don't know. It's just I see here. Uh, network. By the way, Shabbat Shalom. Of course, I pretty much. I, I probably shouldn't download anything. Uh, I don't know. Um, but any now it's like 700, 500. Okay. I don't know why it's complaining because it should have more than enough to uh, to to use. Um, and I've but of course in regards to the settings, I think I have it on the max settings in regards of of. Um, but it, it should still be enough to. Uh, but you know, if we go in here, um, yeah, I have the the video resolution to a thousand and eighty, and then I have the video quality pretty high and the FPA pretty high, and it's probably not going to be that high anyway. So I probably should, uh, you know, at some point fix that down to thirty. Then uh, I guess it would be become a little better. But still, it should still have a lot of resources so ah it's just annoying you know and the thing is i don't really have any room on the on my mobile anymore to you know just just um so that's uh that's just easier with uh with it directly uploading to uh, to the things anyway let's try again and hopefully it will you know um but again, it should have more than enough to to actually upload. If I remember in regards to my calculations, now it's uploading like five hundred. Um, I can't remember how much upload it actually has, but I think it was you know should be enough. Anyway, maybe I need to check some of the settings. Um, but anyway, so we have page fifty-two of Sardis. The Syriac has Sardian, which is the genitive of the Greek retained in the translation. Yeah, anyway, so we have number three that is in regards of from the discourse on the soul and body. Now, of course, I can't even check if the YouTube is actually having it on because sometimes you lose the video because YouTube don't really uh, just. Um, but it is uploading, it seems. Now, of course, now it's only uploading 26. It's a little weird. Anyway, so uh, from this discourse on the soul and body, on the soul and body, the is named by Sibia, see below, page 98, and by Jerome, the anima et corpore, and by Rufinus, the anima et corpore et mente. I guess it's all the Latin, uh, you know, lies and Latin, as we say, right? Uh, any, any case, uh, you know, it's just Latin. I hate Latin numbers, and yet they, you know, many, many use the Latin numbers. Why are you using Latin numbers? You know. 
Anyway, on the cross, BHC has translated incorrectly on the crucifixion. Now, this is in regards of, but the same from the discourse on the cross. And this is the second uh, fragment, I guess, uh, that is there. On the cross, BHC has translated incorrectly on the crucifixion. This is, this is not one of those works of Meliton mentioned by Eusebius or Melito, as we usually call him, or as, as you know, if you search, it's, it's usually Melito. Mentioned by Eusebius, who, however, speaks as if he had not seen all his writings. Um, and it's like, why don't we have his writings today? Well, maybe Rome didn't like the writings. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, then we have number five. Where's number five? That's a good question. It seems the number five goes to the third fragment in regards of voice, the word. Let's see, in the, in the voice, the word, this confirmed the reading of the Syriac in the epistle of Ignatius to the Romans, uh, C2, and of the old Latin, ro, ro, rosus factus sum bos, against the Greek. See my note on this passage, Corpus Ignatianum, page 291. Let's see here, we have uh, number six. That's, let's see, one, two, three. That's the fourth fragment uh, of Meliton, bishop of the city of Attica. I'm not sure why it says bishop of the city of Attica, but it has number six, so maybe it talks a little, little about here. Uh, page 54, uh, L12, or line 12 maybe? Yeah, it must be line 12. Of Meliton, bishop of the city of Attica, this and the following extract were not printed at the same time as the others because I did not, be I did not believe them to be by the bishop of Sardis. Hmm. Which inscription the two first bore? It is plain, however, that this is from the same work as that cited by Anastasius from the track called and dot 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 because it contains the passage quoted dot 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 uh, lots of dots apparently. See Routh Relic Sacri something volume one page hundred and twenty two. I have therefore printed it subsequently at page 49. No one who compares this with the preceding can fail, I think, to draw the conclusion that they are by the same hand, although perhaps by a different one from that of the Apologies. Neither is there any work at, attributed by Eusebius to Meliton, which has the title Is to Patos. Uh, it seems probably that they okay, so they don't really think that, well, I could, you know, you know, reading it, it sounds like it absolutely could be uh, written by him, I think. He has some understanding in, in regards to that, it seems. Uh, that's one, two, three, four fragments. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There's only four fragments here, but... It says it's like the bishop of, of the city of Attica. I'm not sure how that, but, you know, reading it. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll just get to it. It's very interesting reading. I had other things of Melito as well. And, you know, some of it are just very good. Um, it seems probably, probably, probable, sorry, that there has arisen some confusion in the transcribers between the names Meliton and Melitius. Uh, B-H-C assumes that at once that this is the case. I'm not sure who Meletius is. Let's see. That Meletius of Sebasti in Armenia. Oh, where's Armenia? Is that like, uh, I should know that. I've heard about it again. Armenia, where's Armenia? Is it all down with the... Oh, anyway. <laughs> Can't remember. Oh, of course, we could just check. Um, yeah, just... Yeah, one more, uh oh, oh, see here again. Uh, it's funny because now it doesn't complain in regards of any problems in regards of uploading and I'm sitting in the exact same place. Um, but again, I, I think I can actually tune some of the settings so it doesn't need to upload that much. But 
you know, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to help. It should, of course, having less to upload. Um, but, you know, uh, I made the test in regards of uh, uploading and, okay, maybe it only has, mm, maybe it only has around 400 kilobytes actually to upload in 3G. And sometimes it actually seems to upload more or around, around 400 kilobytes. Um, so Armenia, Armenia, Armenia. So may, maybe it had some problems when, you know, going so, uh, you know, uh, again, I, I'll have to check some of the settings. Um, and, you know, the, the problem was that, you know, this program, when when one updated it, you know, you, you lost features and you need to pay for it and all that. So I've gone back to an older version that didn't have those issues. Now, of course, I lost my settings that I had, but um, so, and of course, you know, I've forgotten to actually, um, um, forgotten to actually fix the things, you know, totally. Is Armenia, oh, no, let's see if we have Armenia someplace. Is it probably in regards of east of Turkey, I think, in regards they have this little country? Yeah, I think it's actually this one. It's a little hard to see if it actually is, but I think it is. Now, of course, a lot of uh, Christians uh, and a lot of Christians' uh, idols and images and all that, um, but pretty much got, you know, you know, uh, yeah, the Holocaust of Turkey in some sense, uh, you know. Uh, let's see, Kingdom of Armenia. I guess that was in the old days. I don't think it's that big in our days. Much of it is of, you know, in some sense, the head of Mohammedanism at some point. Uh, go in regards of, uh, uh, no, oh, there we go. So historic Armenia, that's, uh, and I'm not even uploading that much and still it's saying it has trouble. Um, so, okay, so Armenia is here and hopefully uh, the problem with the bad connection will stop. Uh, you know, as you can see, there's full signal here, so. Um, so that's very, very sad. And it's not even uploading that much at the moment, you know? It's not even up to 400, but I guess, I guess it, it will maybe waver in regard, but you know, running the test, I think it was around 400 uh, kilobytes or what is it, like 0 0.4 megabytes or something like that. Um, so, but see here, which has the title is to pass uh, C assumes at once that this is the case. That Meletius of Sebasti in Armenia and afterwards of Antioch is the person met or has made no difficulty in giving Antioch instead of at probable as that an educated Englishman should misspell London. There is a considerable difference between the words and driven into exile. He would therefore hardly have been generally styled Bishop of Antioch. The story of Ecclesiastica or something like that, B, X, or uh, maybe that's 10, and C, I'm not sure what that stands for, 24. Questionable right, and the error must have arisen from some copyist adding the word city to. There was a Meletius, bishop of Sebastopolis in Pontus, who was present at the Council of Nen Powers of Oratory, I guess Oratory is like speaking, uh, was called the Honey of Attica. <laughs> okay. See, Eusebius, B7, I think it is, C30, to and Valesius notes he could hardly be the same as Meletius, who was made bishop of Andalusias, the one being bishop of Sebastopolis in Pontus, and the other of Sebastus in Armenia might uh, vanity. Uh, why why even mix Greek things into the Bible? You know, I, I just, you know, it's uh, just read the Bible and, you know, just find out what the Bible says. You know, it's, it's just, 
I think in regards to the Roman Catholic Church is something in regards of so you can understand how the Eucharist thing, uh, you know, their false cookie Jesus and all that. But apparently they also at this meeting, it seems like a lot of them actually believe that the cookie Jesus or believe in the cookie Jesus, that the bread actually becomes Jesus and the blood becomes his blood. You know, it's just insanity you know can people read the scriptures or something like that is it really so hard to read what jesus says or yeshua says you know do this in memory or remembrance of me because he died once and for all for the sins of the world no 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 we are going to you know sacrifice him over and over and over and over in the whole houses it's insanity it's absolutely insanity um you know, we have 500 years. The Danish people in, in this country I live in have had 500 years to fix the things. And yet, we're still having these, you know, we have all, all these pagan traditions, you know, uh, festivals, Sunday, Christ Mass, Easter, and now also Halloween, you know, and all the, other, the rest, you know, uh, first Advent, second Advent, and it's all on Sunday, right? Everything is on Sunday. It's just Sunday, Sunday. And, you know, you wonder why they are so happy, happy, happy about Sunday. Well, maybe because it's in regards of Sol Invictus, the venerated, oh, sorry, uh, see, Sol, Sol Invictus, the unconquerable sun god, which, of course, is a false god, but that's in regards of Sunday, Sunday. It's, you know, the solar day. It's the first day of the week. It's not the blessed, sanctified day uh, that, 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 that God rested on and blessed and sanctified and, and set apart from the rest, you know, which is Saturday. <laughs> well, and if we want to be totally correct, and of course we want to be as correct as possible, it's from uh, Friday, in, in regards to the Roman time thing and all that, it's from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. We are now in the seventh day, which is the blessed day of the week. Um, it's not the first day of the week, you know, and yet they go, you know, of course, it goes all back to Rome and all the, you know, abominations and all that. Anyway, let's go back. The later, according to, you know, and I was at this meeting, I was just going there because I wanted to, you know, it sounded interesting that maybe someone, you know, maybe you could meet someone that actually, uh, but, it, you know, it seemed that everybody fled from me, you know. It's just, uh, <laughs> it just didn't really work, apparently. Uh, or just gave me the cold shoulder or something, you know. Um, and, and the lecture, you know, was a lot of, you know, those things that was like, it just didn't really work for me. But anyway, um, now, of course, they, you know, they had the Trinity, so they had that correct in regards to the Trinity, that's, you know, and so that's, that's good. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, and one of the, the guys that I talked to, I think one of those that stood for it, he was like, yeah, he's asking, you know, you, did, you know, you don't want to buy the book, you know, nah, I'll, I'll stick with the Bible. And, and he was like, oh, you, you just came for the snacks? <laughs> I was like, no, I came to listen to the to the lecture, you know. I'm not going to eat all these snacks, you know, in regards to I don't eat those kinds of things, you know. I try, try to steer away. And actually, in regards to that, I just, I just wanted some water. They only had water with bubbles, and that's not so good. Anyway, I, I fell into that. Um, the, of course. Anyway, um, so... Um, but, you know, in regards of seeing how they saw some of the things and I don't really, uh, nope, nope, nope. And also in regards of Sunday, you know, I just, um, so again, you know, we know Rome, of course, is trying to give the Protestants back. And of course, apparently no one seems to know who the Antichrist is in our days and know who the whore is, the great city that rules over the kings of the earth which would be Rome. And of course, the head of the Catholic Church is the Antichrist, you know, the guy in white robes. Anyway, but no one knows this. Uh, apparently, all the Protestants knew it. You know, that's what some of the things it seems they actually agreed on. They had a lot of other issues that they didn't agree on. 
which you know we have Luther still being wrong in regards of the cookie Jesus and he was hanging on to that doctrine but we have to remember these people were, were former Catholics so there was a lot of leaven they still had in the back in some sense and and you know there's a lot of things that I have issues in regards of uh, you know, Luther had, you know, his ways, and it's uh, it's not yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of him, but in regards of talking about who the Antichrist was was and all that, you know, yeah, I think he pretty much got that correct. He's really harsh in, in his words, but you know, at least he's just saying it as he sees it. He's not you know, he's not holding back like a lot of these, you know preachers in the pulpit in our days that doesn't really say anything in regards to who the Antichrist is. They say nothing. They're just, you know, leading the flock back to the man of 666. Anyway, um, the Roman Caesar, the Pontifex Maximus, you know, the king of heathendom that, you know, thinks himself to be the head of all Christianity. Well, I think he pretty much has excommunicated himself for, you know, a long, long time ago. Anyway, um, let's see, yeah. And he thinks he can excommunicate people from the church, you know? Oh, yeah. Let's see him. Anyway, um, just read the Bible, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation and study that and be careful of the wolves and she, you know, just study the Bible, you know? And you will grow in the Bible and you will begin to see what things are, you know, you will probably be led astray here and there and all that um, sometimes. And But then you can, you know, when you read the Bible and you find out, uh oh, this is actually not correct, you can then correct yourself. But you need to read the Bible for yourself to actually and study the things to actually, you know, um, because there's a lot of wolves in sheep clothing out there and uh, promoting, to, you know, in regards of, Rome being the whole and the Antichrist actually being the head of the Roman Catholic Church, you know, and Roman Empire. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess it's in regards of the Eucharist, so called Holy Inquisition, where they killed the saints. Um, it's just insanity. Now, of course, uh, which we have, of course, prophesied in the Bible. Um, yeah. Let's see, where did we get to? Uh, sorry, I kept got it on to uh, 60. 35 years after the council, although the similarity of their own names caused some confusion, later, according to Socrates, was translated from Sebastian first to Baroca and then to Antioch. See History Ecclesia B2C44 and to Sumen History Ecclesia b 44 for C um, 28, both Meliton and Meletius were celebrated for their eloquence, eloquence, eloquence or something like that. Okay, eloquence, I, we can just look that up. We can just copy, copy, copy and go over in the program here. I see powerful and effective language, eloquence. Eloquence. Yeah, eloquence. Anyway, let's go back to, uh, there we go. This fragment, which apparently it seems there's some issues if it's actually for Melita or not, I'm not. Anyway, uh, let's see, seven, seven, seven. Where is the number seven? That's a good question. Actually, that's actually wonderful in regards of you know when we need to count to fifty, we could actually have. Yeah, yeah, instead of, you know, we have all these pagan traditions that has nothing to do with the Bible. Well, you know, just, you know, the Antichrist has a way of putting some Christian glamour on it. And uh, then apparently everything is okay in regards to paganism. But no, 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 no. Why would we continue to do these stupid things, you know? Why won't we use the Bible to verify if these things are actually in the Bible? <laughs> Don't do as the pagans. Yet, what do we do? We do exactly as the pagans. We just, you know, just give it some Christian glamour and then everything is okay. Now we have Christianized the pagan traditions. How foolish, you know? How stupidity, you know, just insanity. 
Oh, you have pagan traditions. Oh, come on board. We'll just Christianize those traditions and then everything is okay. You know, come on, you know. Can people see how stupidity that or you know, uh, you know, it's just awful. It's just and yeah, it's just outrageous actually. I, uh, I'm missing the words. Sorry, I'm not uh, you know in regards. There's a lot of words I'm missing, but it's totally outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. But maybe we should go back to the Bible and actually keep the you know uh, keep the uh, the things that God said we should keep, right? No, no, we can't do that. Now you are a Judaizer. Well, my master was a Jew, and he kept those, you know. He he didn't keep all these pagan traditions and follow the man of six six six. Oh well. Uh, yeah, let's see here. I can't really find where the number seven is. I can't, but it must be after number six, of course. But it's uh, yeah, I can't really find it. It should be around here, but nope. But the last fragment apparently might, you know, might apparently be another guy. But it's still some good stuff. Anyway, we'll get to it. So page 56, uh, uh, line 5, in regards to number 7. I, and I, can, I, I really can't find where number 7 is on the paper. I'm looking here, and because I have it printed out as well, sitting with it here. And I can't really find it, but it should be after number 6. So it must be in regards to the last uh, fragment. So it's, let's see. Maliton, Bishop of Itika. It sounds like it is actually, you know, just the title. Anyway, this is the same as the preceding, all the... Um, is there one more or something like that? Um, oh, there might actually be one more. Well, there seems actually to be something, but uh, maybe my printer didn't print it out really good. Let's go up and see if I'm up here. Uh, yeah, my printer didn't, apparently, you know, it's not, that, that's it, my printer have issues. Um, so, you know, there's, you know, design failure, what is called design breakage and all that. Uh, wonderful printer, but, uh, you know, I have some problems in regards to printing. It's, it's, you know, it's not bad, but sometimes it just does. I have fragments. Uh, I see here. This is the same as the preceding, although written, dot, 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 dot. This last extract is taken from a volume procured in Egypt in 1843 by Dr. Tatum, with several leaves added in 18 and the end. And it is in its present state consists of only one father, you know, on earth, but in it, extracts from the fathers of the church, so-called fathers, um, of the church cited in opposition to various heresies. I would probably, in regards if any anything, you know, in regards of calling them anything, if they were Christians, um, you know, uh, you know, maybe brethren in Christ awaiting resurrection, you know. Anyway, uh, father of the church cited in opposition to various heresies. What the title of the work is, or who is, who is his its author, does not appear. Uh, COD, ADD, and I'm sure in regards of 14, uh, 533, three, not 14532, as BHC states. I guess this is a, a guy, but anyway, let's get back, to, uh, let's get, let's get to the, you know, the meat of the things. So this is Melito. I'm going to call him Melito, Melito, Bishop of Sardis. And as I understand it, this is some of the things that has not uh, made it into uh, let's move that over here this is something that has not been um, not been uh, you know fixed in you know we have all these books before Nicaea these uh, huge amount of books with a lot of writings in them but apparently there's a lot of writings that haven't uh, you know from before 325 that hasn't uh, come into this uh, these things and uh, you know, I've heard that, you know, in regards of Ara uh, Aramaic material, that there could still be a lot of, of gems out there in the Aramaic language. But again, the Aramaic apparently doesn't seem to be so popular with the scholars, and I have no idea why, um, because it really helps on, you know, we have the New Testament in Aramaic where we can see where the name of God should be in the New Testament, yet... 
it's you know in 22 of the new testament books anyway uh, and it actually also clarifies even more that jesus is absolutely god because it says it directly now of course you can read the greek uh you know a translation of the greek without you know actually coming to that same conclusion because uh, in regards to jesus being god it's pretty much everywhere in in it you know and also in the old testament so-called old testament uh the scriptures um but anyway um it's uh yeah, but it's just making it more, you know, even more visible that that Jesus is God. It just says it, says it directly flat out, so there shouldn't be any, you know, uh, any, um, what shall we say, any uh, problem with seeing it. It just says, you know, that, yeah. Anyway, of course, in regards to the Greek, when they actually quoting the the bible or the scriptures you know sometimes you actually have the name in the scriptures but then again we have a title instead um and then you can of course go to the aramaic and see if they actually you know still have the name in it and uh, yeah it's just um but of course it's not to say that one you know just read reading the scribes, scriptures it's so on so many levels that jesus is god it's just everywhere when you begin to open up the flower and just smells and it becomes more and more powerful in regards of the of the smell anyway getting back to 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 this uh, thing here by uh by melito uh bishop of sardis and again uh, Sardis is one of the cities in Asia Minor. Asia Minor was the, was the place that rejected Paulus, uh, according to himself, in one of his last letters. They all turned from him. All Asia turned away from him. Maybe it has something to do in regards of, uh, you know, the Roman man, uh, you know, wolves in sheep clothing and all that. Anyway, um... Of course, the book of Revelation is very interesting in regards of some apostles that they tested and found liars. So these apostles needed to be tested and they found out they were liars. So they must have been very good deceivers, right? Yeah, well, Jesus warned, warned us about wolves in sheep clothing. Anyway, and of course, who was doing the first inquisition? Well, <laughs> And who went to Rome and where what is in Rome? Well, in Rome, that's the hall. Anyway, uh, and of course, yeah, at the moment, we have the Antichrist in Rome as well. Now, that's not to say that the Antichrist will continue to be in Rome, because in the future, as far as I can see, Rome is going to be destroyed. And, uh, well, I'm not sure how much, you know, in regards to the whole system, but... You know, uh, we'll have to see what is going to, to you know, um, as Yeshua, he said, you know, the bad poisonous seeds, that would be the lawless seeds, they would be thrown into the fire. Uh, you know, all the things that is a stumbling block will be thrown into the fire. And then afterwards, the good, eatable, law-abiding seeds will be taken into his barn. barn. Uh, you know, uh, but anyway, that's still future. And uh, but of course, we know that the good seeds and the bad seeds are growing up together. And uh, you know, the darnel and the weed, and they pretty much looks looks a little like the same if you look it up on the internet. Like for example, uh, let's see on the internet here. So this is something that is ongoing. So when people look at Christianity. They oh I'm just already when when people look at Christianity they may many times look on uh, on Roman Catholicism and then they find out it's just paganism you know that's just like the rest of it you know and then they never get to you know they never get into you know the truth as sadly of it because they yeah okay it's just paganism okay great well uh. And nothing to see here, right? So Satan has done his work, you know. So anyway, let's see here, uh, wheat and Darnell. But of course, what they don't know is that the bad seeds had to grow up with the good seeds. You know, I think that the Christians will continue to, you know, and, and has in the past protest uh, this system uh, you know, so Protestants are pretty much just Christians knowing the scriptures and protesting this wicked system. Anyway, let's see here if we can um, 
there's at least one here, but um, so this is in regards to the lessons from the parables. So I think this is the uh, Daniel, which is which is giving poisonous seeds. You, you know, you. I'm not, I'm not sure how if you die about it, but it's poisonous. You know, it's it's not good for food. And this is good for food. This should be the weed, as 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 I understand it. Uh, if I remember correctly, you know, I might be, uh, I think it was the Darnell that has these, uh, but the thing is, it looks a little like the same. Now, of course, you can see the different characteristics, but, you know, when you are on the field and all that, it's understand it, it's like, it's it's grass, you know, it seems, you know, it's, it looks looks a lot like the same, but yet it is not the same. It's not the same fruit that it gives, gives out. Uh, I thought that was things on a field and you would burn the the, the 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 bad things you know the you know the the darnel and uh, you would have you, you would fix you would take the so he's using a parable that people would have understood in his days things uh maybe it's uh no let's see but anyway you can do your own research on that uh no it doesn't seem like i think it's over here that it's actually i i, I guess that Denmark as well, but I'm not so. Any case, you know, you have the bad poisonous seeds and you have the good eatable seeds, and you take the the bad and and you know just burn them, you know, and then you have the good ones, and you take those in the barn, and that's yet it's yet future. So I will and study the Bible is because it will, you know, expose him. So the Catholic Church have done their work to not, you know, to distort and, and, and burn people and their writings, you know, and kill them off and persecute them. And, uh, yeah. And sadly, I think Melitus' writing might also have been some of the things that have been affected. Get anything from what there is left because we have huge amount of things. And you can still extract a lot of information from, from, from those, um, you know, if, if, if they, for example, the quote one of the others and so forward, you know, um, and if, or if they talk about the others, you know, and you can see what they have of issues and so, so you can still, you know, you can still learn a lot from an opposition, um, you know, and of course, wolves in sheep clothing has to promote some truth, right? Because if they just come out, and say you know totally wrong things that is very really clear well they would be found out very, very quickly so they have to mix truth with lies and uh, then deceive people that way and they are very good at that um i guess they must have some help in regards of satan you know and he's it seems like his minions can be very very clever so we should not under underestimate them uh, you know, from my days in the occult and contact with these demons, um, and maybe maybe even Satan, I'm not sure, but at least in regards to the, you know, one of these spirits that I had contact with, you know, was showing himself to be like this eye of Ra, which of course goes back to, as I understand it, you know, Egyptian sun worship. Um, it's paganism in any case. And, you know, having, you know, this so-called, you know, this eye changing different uh, or spirit changing into different things. But anyway, um, that was in my days in the cold world where, uh, you know, and it showed me things and all that was, was, was totally wrong. And I was led astray, you know, as in regards of in regards of showing me in regards of reincarnation and wrong things in regards to the spirit and the soul and all of that and how it was going around. And, and so and it can be very, what shall we say, all what do you call it? All and you know, not inspiring, I guess, but all it can really be. I was I was pretty much filled with a kind of of. Uh, you know, uh, God fear in some sense, but of course it was in regards to the wrong God. Uh, it was in regards of Satan. Um, but anyway, um, so uh, by a miracle in some sense, I got out of that. I've no, you know, <laughs> I was so deep in these things. And, and so I, I, it's, it's really, you know, I was looking for the truth, you know, I was just looking for the truth, you know. And I guess, you know, people looking for the truth with honest heart will, you know, will when they find find it, they will cling to it and not go away from it, you know. 
Um, so I was just deceived uh, by Satan and his minions. Or you know, it's just. Uh, and but I found out that these 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 spirits these spirits are very clever. Um, they are not stupid. Um, at least those that I had contact with. Um, and as uh, I think I had at least contact with two of these. Um, you know, which uh, that's as far as I understand it in regards to, uh, there might have been more, I don't know, don't, don't go that way, you know, it's stupidity. Now, these things, uh, and these intelligent beings that you can ask questions and all that, but of course they, you know, might lead you astray, um, which they did to me at least, but anyway. Um, so maybe that's why God doesn't want us to contact these beings because he knows, you know, he knows everything, right? And he might have known that this is, you know, we, you know, you might be what you call it flabbergasted or whatever from the things and, and, and end up in paganism because it's, you know, one of the other, uh, there was a woman and she, uh, she had contact with these, uh, Nazi, and she was in inside in into this as well, and and she ended up uh, worshiping a tree. <laughs> it's just you know everything in creation. If you begin to worship something, well, you are then worshiping the creation instead of the creator. So you you get into worshiping Satan because if you worship the creation, you worship, you know, you don't worship God. Anyway, um. And of course, Jesus is God, or Yeshua is God, and so forth. Anyway, let's go back to. Sorry, I'm getting off topic here. Uh, but it can be, it can be very dangerous and really take you down the wrong path. And uh, you know, it's. I think they will use any way of trying to get you off off track if you, you know, do some of the things and open doors. They will use you know, the spirits, the unclean spirits, the demons will use tools or try to lead you astray and get you to promote these uh, pagan ideas and i was pretty much working for satan not knowing it you know i was yeah i was a satanist um so and um i had the new testament and i read that and found out uh oh i i might actually be wrong and I began to question the things and I came out of Satan's candy store, you know, as I call it, you know. Satan's candy store is a place when you're inside it and you can just pick and choose whatever you like as long as you stay inside. But don't go out of it, you know. Don't take the doll with the name of Yeshua and go out. Then Satan will react, uh, you know, because he's more than happy when you stay in the shop and promote his, you know, his his fallacies so he was actually pretty much in regards to the cold days pretty much uh what you say a sweet guy in some sense you know it did you know the spirits didn't really do much against me but you know you, you should still you know of course be careful in regards to these but you know i guess you know i was doing his work in regards to promoting satanic doctrines uh, and, you know, I uh, guess Satan was pretty happy about that, you know? So, and he had me pretty deceived. So why should he, you know, make my things? Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, but of course, the spiritual world pretty much, uh, you know, a huge reaction when I, <laughs> when I went out the, or began to go out the, the, the shop of Satan, you know? Um, Anyway, by Meliton, Bishop of Sardis, I've seen the, I think I've seen the snake three times as well, you know, and I had opened up things so I could, you know, uh, but I have like three times at least, maybe more where, you know, where, where the, you know, where they, where the, you know, where they try to, or, you know, the snake, of course, seems to be a symbol of Satan, right? So, but, you know, the first time I think I saw this, the first time I saw the snake, uh, where it was like coming and trying to get me back. And the second or the third time, it was just, you know, it's just hugely angry coming at me with fierceness and trying to, I think, trying to scam me or something like that. Uh, apparently, it was angry. Um, so that's good, you know. If Satan is angry at you, that's a good sign, isn't it? 
you want, you want, you, you know, it's just, yeah. Um, I've probably seen, I'm not sure if I've had that issue more, but, you know, just, um, yeah, opening things in my days in the occults. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, but of course, a little by little, I guess, have closed the doors uh, for this. But I guess it seems like, you know, there's a wall that is there from the beginning. And when we begin to do pagan doctrines and all that, we begin to take that wall down when we begin to do satanic things. And that apparently makes, seemingly makes it... Uh, you know, it seemingly makes it a you know a possibility for Satan and his demons to to you know uh, get in contact with you and then lead you astray. Um, so uh, you know, my suggestion you know would be not to do it. Now, of course, people actually, when doing these occult practices or satanic practices, they can end up with issues. You know, it's not you know it's not. Um, you know, even if I pretty much had it pretty, uh, you know, but I was just doing his, you know, his, uh, so he might have been a little uh, easy on me in some sense. Uh, of course, I might have been hurt, you know, yeah, I might have been hurting myself in, in other, uh, but not realizing it. But in any case, I know of people that have uh, got into issues because they did occult practices, even if they don't believe in the spiritual things. And uh, so, you know, for example, one of them was doing yoga and she had opened herself up for things she couldn't stop. But she didn't believe in spiritual things, but he, she was, you know, as an atheist, but she came to this spiritual crisis meeting in regards of a Kundalini crisis meeting. Um, so she had issues. And I gave her some very bad uh, suggestions at that point. I was there just to find other people in regards to spiritual things and all that. Uh, so I just came there, not because I had issues, but, uh, you know, just to talk with others in regards to spiritual things in some sense at that point. Um, and there was another guy, he had, he had been doing, uh, what's it called, hashish or something like that. And uh, uh, he was, you know, I, I saw a demon in him. Uh, I didn't know at that point what it, you know, how to react and all that. I didn't, I never said anything when I was there, but I saw this stark figure in him and uh, grinning. And and in regards of his story, before I actually saw this, uh, he was talking about that he was, you know, being, you know, after doing this hashish, and he had done that a lot, you know, he had done, done a, a, you know, a, done it before and all that no problem and it's been smoking and all that but at that point apparently it seems the demon must have entered him and sucked all his energy but he, he was talking about that all his energy was just been being sucked out of him so putting everything together and knowing what i know and out there now you know he was you know uh he had a demon that's the problem his problem was a demon that needed to be thrown out um uh, you know, I think that demon was sucking his his energy from him, um, and he had opened the door by smoking weed. So you know, there's um, you know, just, you know, be careful. You know. So let's see um, from the discourse on the soul and body. Okay, let's see. So this is from uh, Milito, Bishop of Sardis. Again, that's one of the churches uh, that Yeshua is making John write to uh, uh, write to in Asia Minor. Um, so and it's very interesting because, you know, as we know from Paul's last letter, they rejected him. And that's very interesting because they might then have been more, what shall we say, um, in line with things, I guess, you know. Um, and it seems like Asia Minor was, you know, um, around 200 years was the place where there was a lot of light. Um, so, anyway, let's see here. Um, by Melito, and again, that's very sad that we, we, we have lost material and all that. There's other materials that we have lost that would have been very interesting to read. Uh, but anyway, Rome apparently didn't like 
much of the things that these guys were, you know, believing and this, I don't know, like Judaizing, right? And all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the whole does the work as prophesied, I guess. And the Antichrist as well, you know. By, by Melitone Bishop's son from heaven in corporeal of his, which their death had scattered when he divided man, was changed, for they in the all creation was wonderstruck, marveling and saying, What new mystery then is this? The judge, so what you call, who is giving all the, the power to judge? Well, that would be Yeshua, right? So, but the principle is seized and is mortal. Who is immortal? Well, that would be God, right? <laughs> the immortal died and answered not a word. The celestial is inferred and endured. What new mystery is this? The whole creation, then the whole creation perceived that for man's sake the judge was condemned. And we have problems again with the, apparently with the, with the signal in regards of, uh, you know, this program, you know, might have made a bit of, uh, in regards of, you know, small, Small thing where it's, you know, instead of just a huge screen popping up. Anyway, that for man's sake the judge was condemned and the invisible was seen and the immeasurable was measured and the impassable suffered and the immortal died. And the celestial order that he might lose was seized upon in order that he might let go, suffered in order that he might have compassion, died, died that he might save. I might say, he had, was buried that he might raise up. So, of course, we're going to be raised up in the future as well. So, this is um, also, let's see here. Um, let's, uh, let's go. For the sake of these things, he came to us. For the sake of these things, while he was incorporeal, he formed for himself a body of our construction while he appeared as a sheep. He still remained the shepherd while he was he was esteemed the servant. He denied not the son. Uh, his father would be the father in heaven. While he trod upon the earth, he also filled the heaven. Or maybe in regards of heavens, usually it's the plural form in, in Hebrew. But anyway, um, upon the earth, he also filled the heavens. While he appeared as an infant, he belied not the oh belied I don't know he belied not the, the eternity of his nature. I'm not sure if it, that's the if that's correctly belied. Let's see if there's a word belied being contradiction. Okay. Belie. Okay. Let's see if we can get back to there we go. Okay, so Nikki he belied not the eternity of his nature. So isn't you know while he was glad with a, I guess it must be body there. Uh, it might be some digital thing uh, where they you know and they, they still makes mistake. Uh, with a body he also, uh, he also hound or bound bound not the singleness of his uh, his hound, hound. That seems wrong uh, as well, right? Uh, it doesn't seem hound. Uh, that's of his God, Godhood, Godhead. And there we have the Godhead. While he was esteemed poor, he was as he was God. Uh, as I understand it, in regards of Melito living in the second century, this is before the Council of Nicaea, where people say, oh, the God, you know, that Jesus was made God at the Council of Nicaea. No, he was always God. Uh, from the very beginning of the New Testament, we see that Jesus is God. Now, even, even I think even uh, Paulus is a great testimony for Jesus being God. But I think he's leading people into lawlessness. And that's, uh, you know. So anyway, uh, we can see in history some of the small things in regards of uh, small uh, here, here and there that, that went out two Gospels in the name of Yeshua. Uh, that was, you know, primarily. And one of them was a lawless Gospel and another was law abiding. So, but both of them was in the name of Yeshua. Anyway, he ceased not to feed the universe 
while he was glad glad in the likeness of a servant he also changed not the likeness of the father he was everything in an immutable nature he was standing before pilate and yet was sitting with the father he was nailed upon the tree and yet was upholding everything and of course i guess it's in regards of the son is in the father and the father is in the son and so forward um and it would be Melito, the bishop, on faith. And this is actually one of the, I guess, the, the most interesting of, of them all, I guess, you know. So let's, let's take that. From Melito, the bishop on faith. We have made collections from the law and the prophets. And that's another thing. They didn't just call it the Old Testament. They called it the law and the prophets or the scriptures or, you know, and they didn't call it, oh, it's the Old Testament and all that. It's the scriptures. There's a lot of things in the so-called Old Testament, you know, the Tanakh or the whatever you want to call it, that has yet to be fulfilled. So, you know, if you call it, you know, I think it's a trick of Satan, you know. If we call it the Old Testament, well, people don't want to read an old, old newspaper. They want to read the new, right? So, <laughs> Uh, so that's the thing, you know. Um, so, but anyway, they they still call it the law and the prophets, or or you know the the scriptures and so forth. Anyway, uh, we have made collections from the law and the prophets relative to those things which has which have been declared respecting our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is in regards of collections from the law and the prophets that would be the so-called Old Testament. Um, that we may prove to your love that he is perfect reason, the word of God, who was begotten before the light, who was creator together with the Father, who was the fashioner, and says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. It seems that uh, Christians are, are, are thinking that the Father is actually speaking to the Son in regards of let us make man in our image, uh, and in our likeness um, so but anyway Elo Elohim is plural so I'm not sure if you can actually uh, you know verify that it would be the father speaking to the son but in any case it's Elohim it's plural so it actually I guess as far as I can see it, it should be translated as plural yet it's you know all the translations uh, pretty much doesn't translate it as plural you know some translations have Elohim so you can actually see it's actually Elohim there in the Hebrew, you know. So you can then just, you know, just, uh, you know, know that it, it, it's plural and then you can insert. I guess it's the same when you have capital letters where the name of God should be. You can then just put in the name. The King James Version, for example, every time it's capital letters, you can just insert the name Jehovah. I think still, I think still, it's it's the it's it's demonic or, or yeah, demonic to do that, you know, in regards of, not, of taking the name of God out of the Bible uh, because of traditions and all that. But that's my view on it anyway. Um, so and the, the the Danish Bible does it as well, you know. And I don't know why they would do it, you know. They don't, they don't even in the newer versions, they don't even uh, they don't even fix it with capital letters, you know. Uh, that they, apparently they're going to release a new version, but uh, they will not put the name of God in that version. I'm not sure when they're going to release it or whatever. But uh, I talked to to one of the the you know I think actually she was a high standing in 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 the general whatever. Uh, um, but in any case, um, she just she pretty much just ran away from me in regards of the information I had. So and you know, but I you know talked a little about the name and so forward. So um, you know, if, if you know, why wouldn't why would you mistranslate the Bible when you can see clearly that it's the name of God in it, and then you just translate it to a title? I think it's so dishonest. You're not even translating it. You're you're corrupting it. You know, it's just. Oh, tradition. Yeah, well, I don't like tradition. If you, if you, if you want traditions, just go to the Catholic Church. You know the the bad and the big bad wolf in Rome. You know, and of course the Jews have many traditions as well. We don't want traditions. We want to know what the Bible says. 
instead of just mistranslating the Bible, you know, on purpose. It's just, it's God's word and you're mistranslating it. You know, you're taking the name of God out. You don't do that to any other name in the Bible, but God's name, oh yeah, let's take that out. It's just, uh, it's just total corruption. You know, um, she, apparently she didn't know in regards of, I was talking about the uh, one of the Jews that became a Christian and, and, and translated the whole Bible with the name of God, and she didn't know about that. But instead of, you know, asking me in regards of, you know, ah, she just ran away, you know. Um, I could have sent the information to her if it was, you know, I could just, you know, coming home, sending the information. But she, apparently she was not interested in regards of the information I had. Uh, you know, but apparently she didn't know in regards to this Jew in Denmark that actually translated the whole Bible and put the name of God in it. He just wants to continue in, in the... In the fallacies and it's just you know it's very sad so now of course they used Yahweh instead of Yehovah and I was talking a little in regards of that to her in regards of uh, yeah but anyway run yeah well, well I talked to her like 10 minutes or something like that I guess before she had enough of me uh, finger around 10 minutes or something like that so I got some you know get some information over to her at least but yeah, I don't have my hopes up, but, you know, it would be nice if they just put the name of God in it, you know? And instead of, you know, these, you know, learned people and all that, and then they just mistranslate the Bible, you know? And taking 1 John 5, 7 out of the Bible, you know, I need to go back to the 1850 or something like that in Danish history before I can find 1 John 5, 7. Every single translation in Denmark I've seen, and actually not only taking out 1 John 5, 7, I've seen other Bibles also corrupting more of this chapter. It's, it's, it's very sad. Hey, anyway, it's... Uh, sorry, I'm just getting a little... It's just, it's just annoying, you know. They should... They, they, they don't even, you know... Uh, of course, I could try to contact them again, but I guess they, you know... They, I guess they just... Yeah... Anyway, um, I might go there, you know, and say, hello, you know, are you going to put the name of God in the Bible and uh, put the first John 5, 7 in it as well? And, uh, you know, but of course, I guess they have some kind of copyright again. So I guess there also is on some rules in regards if they need to copyright it, they, you know, they, as I understand it, needs to be a little different from other copies. That's like it. Uh, so I guess they might not even take the words that is you know uh that is just directly uh, because then they can copyright and all that i think there's some you know laws in regards to that anyway uh as i as i have a way of saying copyright is of the devil you know and you know selling god's word doesn't seem to to me to be uh you know um i don't know i understand we have four million people uh spitting in the coffin uh, in regards of money to the church and yet we can't get you know we can't get a free translation from them you know uh, which is not copyrighted uh, shouldn't they actually be the ones actually I would guess they would get some money from you know the but I don't know in regards to the system but you know, and we're apparently pay pay paying this system that continues in their fallacies. They have like 500 years to correct the things, and yet they haven't corrected anything. Actually, they're going the wrong way in the direct opposite uh, direction. So I don't know how things, all things work out and all that, but, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's very sad. Four million people paying, and yet they copyright this thing and can't even get the translation uh, correct in regards to the name of God. Uh, it's just sad. Anyway, we have made collections from the law and the prophets relative to those things which have been declared respecting our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may prove to you love, to, to your love that he is perfect reason, the word of God, who was begotten before the light, who was creator together with the Father. Who is the creator? Well, we God is the creator, right? And Jesus is the creator because everything was created through him, right? So the God... The word was God and the word was with God. 
So how does that fit? You know, we have one God, right? But we have the Word being God and was uh, with God. And of course, the uh, uh, false witnesses corrupt that in their own Bible. Now, of course, they insert the name Jehovah, so that's good. But you know, they you know they don't believe that Yeshua is God in the flesh. So they have corrupted that scripture to try to not say that. I think it's pretty hard to actually, you know, totally uh, do that because it's on so many levels. So anyway, um, who was creator together with the father, who was the fashioner of man? You know, I, I'm thinking, you know, if I was a false witness, you know, and, and looking that so many Christians, you know, believe that Jesus is God in the flesh, you know, I would, you know, maybe go into investigation of that instead of, well, maybe I'm actually, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're actually correct in regards to Jesus being God, you know, and yet they just pretty much, uh, they're denying the son. They, they have many ways of, uh, you know, getting around the, uh, anyway, as uh, so to those things which have been declared respecting our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may prove to your love that he is perfect reason, the word of God. And it, I guess I got some experience from, uh, sorry, I'm cutting it out in some sense, but talking with the Jehovah's Witnesses and listening to their conclusions in regards of, you know, and also how others have attacked in regards to the Protestants, uh, it's like, well, the Protestants was pretty much just Christians trying to figure out what is going on. And uh, now, of course, um, you know, s some of them had absolutely issues. Like uh, we still have the Lutheran Church in Denmark, which still have uh, issues in regards of the cookie Jesus and uh, pagan festivals and so forward and all that. But the idea of the overall Protestants was that they found out something was wrong and began to go in the other direction. And we have the Anabaptists, which I think pretty much are the ones that got closest. Now they still have issues here and there. And in our days, you know, it's, you know it seems uh, you can find some of these groups that have pretty much, you know, gone the totally wrong way. Uh, but in regards of history, in regards of the Anabaptists, I think they pretty much in regards of uh, got the closest, and they were persecuted by both Protestants and Catholics. And, uh, and actually, or oh, maybe I should say, they were pro uh, persecuted by Catholics and the Protestants, even if they were Protestants themselves. Which is very sad to see, like, uh, uh, some of the big guys, like Luther, I think also Calvin, and some of the other guys, which, oh, is Swingley as well, uh, was against the Anabaptist. And, the, you know, it's, it's very sad, very, very sad. So, um, you know, uh, it, it, you know it, it just, it's, it's nearly beyond words how, why any one of the Protestants would actually go against these uh, because they were called radicals, you know, oh, they were too sellers, you know, it's like, and of course they weighed the words of Yeshua more than the words of Paul. So they didn't remove the letters of Paul, but they put more effort on the words of Yeshua, which of course should be our master. And Luther, for example, you know, Luther was very, very heavy on Paulus, which sadly I think led him into a lot of problems. Um, and and uh, doing sadly the work of the wrong uh, power in some sense in that, in, in some of the regards. Uh, uh, very sad. And we have Andreas Bodenstein von Karlstadt. Of course, he still has some issues here and there, but uh, I, I think he was, you know, I think he was of the right heart in some sense. And it seems Luther actually uh, was the reason why he was kicked out and all that. But anyway, that's, uh, you can look that up as well. And he was against idols and images and all that. And Luther comes back and begins to uh, turn things around and all that and have some... I have some information from a Lutheran guy uh, where to find those sources. And at some point I'll read Luther's sermons. I think it was like six or eight sermons and apparently they exist. So it will be very interesting. You know, you know, you collect the puzzle pieces here and there, but it would, would it be very interesting to see how, how, what Luther actually does to try to turn things in the wrong direction when he comes back to Wittenberg. 
So um, anyway, I should get going in regards of. Uh, so anyway, let's let's get. Uh, it's just it's 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 it's, a, it's kind of a mess, but it's like in regards to the Reformation, we have so much focus on Luther, and people don't tend to know who Andreas Karlstadt is, and if they know who Andreas Karlstadt is, is you know usually slandered by the Lutherans. Uh, or, or miss miss uh, what you call it mistreated uh, miss uh, miss uh, yeah miss uh, yeah so uh, uh, Luther should have have supported Karlstadt when he when he returned um, and yet he got him kicked out as as far as I can see but as uh, more to research on that and um, you know how he talks about Karlstadt in his even in his uh, later years you know I found out that. When when Karlstadt died, Luther was you know in his what what shall we say in his late uh, years, and he was speaking very very um, uh, devilishly against Karlstadt. You know that he heard this wonderful story that they were spitting on his grave and spitting on his house, and then he says, "But what well, we shouldn't speak bad about the dead." It's just so devilish because Karlstadt was just. Uh, you know, he was just going by scripture. Uh, he's trying the best that he could. Now, of course, he had issues. A lot of, you know, they were Catholics, former Catholics. So they were trying to... The thing is, you know, a Christian, I think, would be a Protestant uh, in regards to protesting against the Antichrist. Because the Antichrist wants you to, you know, he thinks he's the head of Christianity, which he's not. The head of Christianity is Yeshua, and and uh, God is our Father, not a man down in Rome. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's very sad. Anyway, uh, a lot of people wants to follow after this, you know, thinks this and that becomes Christians, and then begin to follow the man of six six six, and this whole, you know, and all the wicked doctrines of this satanic system. Um, so, and we can shake these things off. So as far as I can see, any Christian would be a Protestant, you know. He, he would be protesting against the system, you know. That's the idea of Protestant protesting against Roman Catholicism. That's, uh, I think, it's, I think it's, it would be pretty clear. And we see Protestants from the very, you know, beginning as far as I can see. It seems to be already going on in some sense in the first century, you know. Uh, yeah, if the book was written in the first century in regards of Asia Minor and all that, yeah, I think uh, I think you could call them Protestants, you know. They protested against the Roman man. So anyway, um, let's go forward. Uh, let's see here. That he, the light, who was cre created together with the Father, who was the fashioner of man, who was all in all, who among the patriots was patriarch, uh, who in the law was the law, among the priests, chief priest, among kings, governor, among the prophets, the prophet, among the angels, archangel. And that's, uh, in some sense, very interesting in regards of, uh, I'm still studying these things. In regards of uh, trying to figure out, because you know it's, um, I think the you know the angel. We have the captain of the angel, and it seems the captain of well, sorry, the captain of the host. And I think in regards of the host is referred to Israel, and the captain it seems to be actually God. And who who would that then be? It would be. Uh, Yeshua, I think, because you know God cannot be seen, but God cannot can be seen. But so one of them can be seen, and that would be the Son. Um, you know, the Son is seen. You know, the Son is coming to Abraham as a man. Uh, you know, I think he's also the one fighting with Jacob, and you know, um, yeah, you see these stiff. You know, all the you know, see see him. You know, it, 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 you know, leading the Israelites out of Egypt, uh, where God is in the pillar of fire, and I think is it also smoke or something like that. He's, you know, when he's destroying the Egyptians, he's looking out, and we are told that God is a man of war. Now, of course, 
you know, collecting all these things, it seems to be actually, and, and Yeshua saying that Moses wrote about him, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we should believe Yeshua, right, and go back and look, is that actually true? And it seems to actually, yeah, it's true. <laughs> anyway, so let's see, uh, among the prophet, the prophet, among the angels, archangel. Again, I'm still trying to figure out in regards, you know, um, if if there's something in regards of, I know there's this idea that uh, Michael, uh, the archangel, might be Jesus, and I'm still looking into that. I'm, um, I'm really having my, uh, you know, the problem, I guess, is if that's not true, you would be worshiping an angel instead of uh, God. And that's a no-go, of course. Um, but it seems the idea has come up with different Christians. And it seems Melito also might might be also be another. But anyways, you know, among the angels, archangel. And, you know, we see that God, when he, in regards of, we see different, uh, that he is the one uh, that going in front of the Israelites. So the, the, the guy or the man standing with the sword when Yehoshua, when before they enter the land, or I'm not sure if they actually have already have passed over the Yarden at that point, I can't remember, but uh, in regards to the city and this, uh, this, uh, you know, man, uh, or angel, I can't remember what is uh, actually clarified as, uh, but it seems like he's actually God. Um, and again, the problem in regards of the, the, what do you call it? Uh, I have to remember that when we read the Bible, there's these chapters in it. And you have to be careful about the chapters uh, because there's like a, chapter split in the middle of it where uh, you know you would maybe not get the sense that this is connected but you have to remember that these chapters was not there this is you know these chapters are inserted by as you know sometimes when i'm looking at it it seems like it must be a drunken monk or something like that had that had inserted these chapters so just overlook the chapters in regards of don't think that a chapter is actually a break in the text that's uh that's a good thing but anyway it seems like it's actually the angel that is scott speaking to yehoshua as well there and we have other places where it says that god is the one that going in in front uh, you know and it's just you know so many pointers that, that this angel uh, seemingly must be god so um Anyway, and we also see the other angel that is in regards of ba Balaam or something like that talks like he's God as well. And we see that another, you know, we see different places where this angel or messenger, uh, Malach, which is just a messenger actually. I think actually uh, Angelos is probably in the Greek. I think it actually also means messenger. I'm not entirely sure. But when we listen to angel, we think like, you know, an angel, you know, just an angel, right? Um, so... But uh, yeah, any case. So let's see here. Um, so among the prophet, the uh, prophets, the prophet, among the angels, archangel. And of course, that's very interesting. If, if God is the one that actually is going uh, before the Israelites and actually is fighting for them, that they, they, we, we can see they can't do anything with God. If God is not with them, they they don't win, you know. Uh, we see them, you know, the first time the Israelites uh, are said to go into the land and they rebel, they don't want to go into the land because these people, you know, they have like, uh, uh, what was it called? Walls to the heavens and these are great people and many people and blah, blah, blah and all that. And and God become angry at them, and then they rebel and go in and anyway. And I think it's Moses saying to them, "Well, God is not with you, and you shouldn't do it." But they they do it anyway. And I think it is it the Anakim or something like that. They pretty much uh, make them flee. They they can't stand against the Anakim without God. Um, we see another uh, place where 
uh, while you, when Yehoshua enters the land with the Israelites, and because someone have taken a cursed object, and I think it's some silver as well, and hidden it in, in his tent, uh, God is not with them, and then they they get uh, you know they they end up fleeing again. Um, so we see that the Israelites can't do anything without the help of God. You know, um, and in regards of, of these people, it seems like these people was you know uh, you know great people. They might have been a little you know. We see, I think it's uh, the guy that uh, David strikes. You know, it seems like they're a little higher than the usual thing. Um, so uh, you know, a, pre a little bigger than the usual thing. So. And then it might have been some genetic genetic thing, I guess, in regards of being, uh, um, yeah. Anyway, um, so they might have been, uh, you know, like who knows, three meters or something. Like that. I can't remember how how big the the other guy, but you know, uh, people that are pretty big, you know, and you wouldn't actually go up against, you know, because they are so big and all that. But anyway, if you have God with you, no problem, you know. Just look at uh, David, right? Just a little uh, stone and all that against a big man, and boops, there he goes. You know, um, you know. I think he had God's help uh, behind him, or maybe in front of him. You know. Um, but but anyway, we see that God is going in front of them, and He's like a consuming fire against these wicked nations. And that's the thing when people are like, oh, you know, the Israelites are killing off these people. Yeah, they're killing off these people because God is judging them for their wickedness. And uh, yeah, so um, and, and we have I'm I'm listening to the, to the fifth book of Moses, and you just have all these pointers here and there talking about God going in front of the Israelites and who's going in the front of the Israelites well the the angel right is where he says nay I have now come as the as the captain of the host and it seems like the host might be Israel so he's coming as the captain of and of course uh, Yehoshua falls down and of course he's told to take off his sandals like Moses was when he was talking to God in the burning bush when the messenger was standing there. And that says, I am now come down. Well, who came down? Well, God came down. Who took the Israelites out of Egypt? Well, God did. The messenger in the, in the pillar of fire who was fighting for them. Here we see him fighting again, you know, it's just, um, yeah. Very interesting. And who would that angel be? Well, that would be Yeshua. As far as I can see, that would be Yeshua. The Israelites killed their God. That's, yeah, that, you know, that had, yeah, it's just, you know, just, wow. It's uh, incredible. Anyway, um, so let's see where we, so the king forever and ever for the, and I'm still trying to research these things and trying to get more pointers here and there because uh, there might be things, but it just seems to go in that direction. You know, if you just take everything, it, it, it must be Yeshua that actually takes the Israelites out. You know, it's just, uh, uh, he's standing in the bush, burning bush, right? He's a man that comes to Abraham um, I think it's also was it was it a man or an angel or maybe it's actually both in regards of Jacob because we got get some information from the Torah and uh, I think it one of the prophets also speaking about this where he says that Jacob was struggling with God. So, but he was struggling with a man as I remember. I think there was something in regards to that. Uh, so if he's struggling with a man, but struggling with God, well, it must be the God man. <laughs> and who's the God man? Well, who is both God and man? That would be Yeshua. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. So let's see. Yeah. Among spirits, spirit, in the Father, the Son. Oh, maybe we took it. Okay. Among the angels, archangels. I'm still trying to figure again, figure out how this goes on. Because I think Michael is actually said to actually be the head of your people. Or but if but if 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 the angel, which you know, is actually God in regards of when they enter the land, 
shouldn't Michael, if he's the head, but he that would be the captain, right? So again, it's the I, I'm 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 really you know it's like yeah, I'm really struggling with this because you know because I, you know I don't want to make a conclusion that is wrong and go into fallacy and you know that would be absolutely uh, um, so I'm I'm struggling with it in some sense in regards of uh, um, of this um, because I think Michael is actually spoken about as as uh, as the head of your people or something like that but in regards to the angel standing with the sword or you know the uh, which is seems seems to be god actually you know uh, uh, well that would be god being the head of israel you know um so how does this work out that's the thing you know it's just um yeah so anyway, who in the law was the law among the, the priest, chief priest, among kings, governor, among the prophets, the prophet, among the angels, archangel. Uh, again, it's very interesting because archangel is, of course, used in regards of, uh, yeah, it's, I'm really, I'm having my difficult with it. But anyway, and the, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's Spurgeon also talking about Michael actually being, you know, um, 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 you know, it's just, it's just uh, he was not a, yeah, it was, yeah, I'm struggling a little here. Um, so I want to be able to see directly from scripture that that is so, if anything, because, you know, um, uh, eh, so, so that's, uh, yeah. Um, we have, what do we have? We have Michael talked about in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelation, at least, um so i need to do more research i need to know the Bible. you know finding all this you know huge amount of pointers here and there i think i have found like uh at least the, the one pointer that this uh angel with the sword is god is in regards of just that god is speaking and of course he takes it off his sandals and all that has a lot of things and then of course all the other things were well, Moses are talking about that it's actually God going in front of the Israelites. He talks about it in in regards to the first time that, you know, why, you know, I think it's Moses talking about why are you, uh, you know, uh, God is going in front of you and all this and that. And and then they, they won't go in and then, okay, great, okay, God is angry now. And then they go in without him. So now they, they get the asses whooped I've, um, uh, something like that you know they they need to flee but then we see later on also that that moses says that god going uh, i think it's uh, deuteronomy 9 and then De deuteronomy 1 is also in regards of uh where moses speaks in regards of so we see deuteronomy 9 and it's, it's in regards of uh of God is a consuming fire going in uh, in front of you, you know, and who's going in front of you? Well, that would probably be the captain, you know, uh, of the host, right? So anyway, and that if if the host is actually Israel, and um, I, again, I'm I'm, but I mean, it seems you know the Hebrew word and all that. So I'm looking into it. I'm looking into it. That's a lot of things. Very interesting. Very interesting for sure. So in the voice, the word, you know, it's just a, a magnificent book. You know, the Bible is just a magnificent book to study. Very interesting, has a lot of things here and there and all that. It's just so interesting. Uh, anyway, in the voice, the word, among spirits, spirit, in the father, the son, uh, among spirits, spirit, in the father, the son, uh, in God, God. Uh, here we have, you know, two gods, right? But it's the same God. It's, but it's still two. You have the Father and the Son. It's still, you know, the two, but it's still Yehovah. It's, uh, anyway. The King forever and ever. Well, that would be Yeshua, right? Um, for this was he who was pilot to Noah. Oh, he was pilot to Noah? Hmm, interesting. Who conducted Abraham. Uh, I think it might actually be in regards to the food or something like that who was bound with Isaac. I'm not sure how that works out. But it seems like God is also saying, and I need to re-listen to, re to the 
Torah uh, and some other things, but it seems Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, you know, talks about, you know, uh, it talks about that seemingly in regards of God. Yeah, anyway, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, who was bound with Isaac or Yitzchak, who was in exile with Jacob? So, I guess, yeah, I guess Yeshua, or the word that is God, was with Jacob. And of course, Jacob sees this messenger, and he also talks about this messenger, actually. He actually blesses the lads of Joseph by the messenger. Why would he do that? Well, maybe because this messenger is actually God. So he's blessing them by God and the messenger, which has helped him all his days. I think something like that. That's uh, the last part of Genesis. Anyway, who was sold with Joseph, who was captain with Moses. So who was captain with Moses? Well, again, in you know, Yeshua, uh, I'm not sure if it actually says that he was, uh, uh, but I guess he was the one that, you know, let the Israelites out, you know, and, and Moses did things and then God did it, you know, um, so, you know, what well, well God is saying, you know, spread out your hands and then God doing something in regards of, uh, and so I guess in regards of who was captain with Moses seems to be pretty good uh, I guess um, who was the divider of the inheritance with uh, Jesus the son of noon and that would be Yehoshua uh, leading the Israelites in and I think there's something in regards to uh, is it like the seven the seven last places they divide in regards of lots uh, or something in regards to that. I have to reread that uh, as well again. There's a lot of, re of things to research. That's a huge amount of things to research. But I guess, you know, I, you know also in regards of... Uh, I need to... Two seconds. I need to pee, you know. I need to just uh, get some water out. Uh, Yeah, that would pretty much go. Uh, oh, I need to. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, so just trying to collect the things here and there. It's very interesting. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm a very slow learner, but I'm more like a tractor than, uh, you know, um, it's going slow, but it's going surely, I guess. Um, uh, so. <clears throat> Who was the divider of, of the inheritance with Jesus, the son of noon? And in regards of, you know, Jesus, the son of noon would be Yehoshua. And the short form of Yehoshua is Yeshua. And that's, you know, Jesus. Um, I, as I remember, Jesus is actually coming from the Greek. And the thing is, yes, it's, it's funny when people, you know, when you use Yeshua and then people are like, oh, yeah, he's called Jesus and all that. It's like. You know, give me a break, you know. Um, but Jesus, as I understand, is for actually from the Greek. Uh, so um, we have a, a Greek translation of the, the Hebrew, and then you have, you know, from the from the uh, Greek to the English or whatever, you know. Um, so 
Um, uh, yeah, yeah, in case. Um, so, who in David and the prophets foretold his own sufferings, who was incarnate in the virgin, who was born at Bethlehem. Now, so, so according to this, who is it talking about? You know, he's talking about Yeshua, but he's talking like he's the, he's he's the one that was captain with, with the virgin, of course, uh, Yeshua. So. According to this, it was Yeshua that was captain with Moses. It must have been the angel, right? That stood in the burning bush. That was actually Yeshua. Um, and of course, I really have, you know, how the false witnesses can be so brainwashed. I have no idea, you know. They use so much time on the Bible. And as I understand, they go like twice or something like that in the week to the meetings uh, and get educate or what do you call it uh, they get um, well not educate bad education i guess you know in regards of rejecting that jesus is god you know they have the answers for you know that seems to be the thing you know that they have answers you know and trying to slip around that jesus is actually god in the flesh um you know they're just a god instead of the god Anyway, who was the divider of the inheritance with Jesus, the son of noon, who in David and the prophets foretold his own sufferings, like, for example, Isaiah 53. Let me see if I can remember uh, something around that they, the Jews skip Isaiah 53, and that's a curse in regards to the Daniel 70 weeks. And so anyway, but uh, Isaiah 53, uh, Yeshayahu 53, pretty much talks about, uh, yeah, of, of Yeshua in regards of um, his uh, suffering and all that. Anyway, um, who was in what that is in regards of a vast wrapped in swaddling clothes in the manga. Not sure, maybe it's, I'm not sure if it's a mistranslation or uh, what this is. Uh, hmm you know it was pointed out it's already here but yet future yeah it's still satan in control in regards to the roman so-called holy empire thing and all that but uh, the roman beast will be destroyed when yeshua returns and he will set up his you know kingdom so it's it's you know we already i guess in regards to citizens of this future kingdom uh yet it is still future you know so who preached the kingdom, who, and of course, Yeshua would be the king of the kingdom, and a kingdom usually also have rules, right? Uh, who healed the maimed, who gave light to the blind, who raised the condemned by Pilate, who was transfixed in the flesh. I'm not sure what transfixed is, actually is. Let's see what the word is. Um, having your attention fixated as of our rousing terror of all our pierced with a sharp stake or point okay that might be uh, pierced with a sharp stake or point transfix a shrimp on the skiver or something okay impale Im uh, impale 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 and spike yeah okay so who was transfixed in the flesh, who was hanged upon the tree, who was buried in the earth, who rose from the dead, who appeared to the apostles the right hand of the father david's son who is also his lord is sitting on the right hand of jehovah and jehovah does not give his salvation to any other so yeshua has to be jehovah himself sitting at the right hand of his father and of course you know the false witnesses get into uh, so many problems anyway who is the rest of those that are departed uh, who is the rest of those that had departed? Okay. The recoverer of those who were lost, the room of the church. Uh, Some place as well. Of course, I guess this was in regards of, he talks about Jesus Christ. That we may prove to you your love that he is perfect reason, the word of God. I've got interesting, I think that's something in regards to the Bible on it, but. I'm not totally sure where it is and all that. And yeah, still something to, you know, it's huge. You know, even even reading the Bible for years now, uh, still so much, you know, 
still so 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 much you know, to 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 get uh. anyway the captain of the angels again a very interesting title here and again angels you know could just be messenger ever and ever sorry about that uh, a bit out of the seems like they actually you know also verify here or say that you know he was the one was the one getting the uh, getting the the Israelites out, which of course would just be Jude. Oh, I'm not sure why it does that. Uh, I don't think it did that in the past when you needed a uh, having problems here with the version again. Uh, I still need to look into that. I think it's because of the Aramaic versions I have installed uh, that makes. Uh, so, but I tried to new install the whole program and, and, and lost all my settings, very annoying, but, um, and it seems to not be that, you know, it's, uh, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Now, that might be interesting, the Lord, just remember the Lord, let's see if we can find one of the versions that's, uh, have a different trend. Maybe I need to go to the internet to to maybe actually maybe the Latin actually not the but anyway uh, I think Whitecliff translated from the Latin but anyway uh, but I will admonish you once that know all things that Jesus saved his people from the land of Egypt and the second time lost them that believed not. So, so at least here we see once uh, in regards of they inserting, this is the variation that Jesus saved his people. And some believe that having Jesus there would have been more in conflict with people than the other things. So some believe that the text is, uh, you know, the thing that should actually have been there in his letter. Um, so um, that's an interesting variation from the Lord. Because the Lord would, of course, just be reference to God, right? Like Melitu as well seems to verify that uh, corruption have, you know, in regards to history, some corruption here and there. For sure. Who was captain with Moses? And clearly this thing from Melitu. And who would be the captain, I guess? That would be the angel speaking to Moses. Um, so leading the, the Israelites out which would also be for sure to, to, to look into. And of course, just reading the Bible, the scripture should be the same that we've, you know, and then that's, I guess, the reason why in regards to the uh, Antichrist and the beast and all that, that we see that, that people, you know, talked about these things and we can find in historical, you know, um, so it's nothing new in some sense. It's just, um, so let's see, uh, of Melito, bishop of the city of Attica, and that might be an in the midst of the earth. And did not undergo dissolution, he, he that rose from the dead. Oh, sorry, and did not undergo dissolution. He that rose from the dead and raised up, the, this is the lamp uh, that was slain. This is the lamp that was stump, you know, not speaking, I guess. This is even tied tied and was buried at night from the neither grave. This is he raised the lepers and gave light to the blind and uh, thou gavest the command and he was crucified. Uh, thou wast uh, thou wast oh vast vast exalting and he was buried but anyway fresh sufferings uh, thine own law who call thee Israel again? We're talking about Jesus here, Yeshua. Knewest not, O Israel, that this was the firstborn of God. Uh, he's the first. Uh, yeah, I don't know in regards, but he's the firstborn of the dead. Might actually be um, because some translation says only begotten. I just need to check in regards to the only begotten. What word is actually there? Um, because you know. Besides Yeshua being the son of God, we also have the children of God being born, you know, in regards to the second birth, right? So, 
you know, I'm not sure in regards of how you could, you know, un- in the only begotten, well, I guess, you know, in the context of, you know, Jesus being special and God and all that, uh, before creation and all that, but we also have the children of God, so I'm not sure if, you know, and they would be begotten by God, right? So, I'm not, I am not. need to check the translation in regards of the only begotten, uh, but here he says, firstborn, uh, only begotten. Um... In any case, I, you know, I think we understand the idea still, but I do wonder in regards of, of maybe maybe uh, what is actually behind those words if if one could actually make another translation. And I saw something about it where they actually did not translate as only begotten. Uh, but I have, you know. Anyway, I'll, so we have the firstborn of God. And of course, he would be the firstborn of God if he was born before creation, right? But that doesn't mean we don't have, you know, children born later on in regards of the children of God, those that believe in the Son uh, and are born by the Spirit, right? So who was begotten before the sun, who made the light to rise, who lighted up the day, who separated the darkness, who fixed the first foundation, who suspended the earth, who collected the ocean, who extended the firmament, who adorned the world. Are we still talking about Yeshua, right? That was the Judas to whom thou gavest hire. Bitter were thy false witnesses whom thou stirrest up. Bitter was thy gall which thou preparest. Bitter was thy... Again, you know, I must be God, right? Um, you know, who, 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 who else in regards of law, you know? Thou slewest thy Lord, and he was lifted upon the tree, and a tablet was fixed up, fixed up to denote who he was, that while ye tremble. He, he that supported the earth was supported upon a tree. The Lord was exposed to act a ignominy with the naked body. God put to death. Jehovah. Anyway, of course, the Israelites' right hand. Ah, the fresh wickedness of the fresh mercy. The lights were turned away, and the day. The word that became flesh. And according to this, also the firstborn. And I guess that, you know, firstborn of God. And I guess that would be true, right? Because he's the. He's born before. Born before creation. He's not created. Everything that was created was created through him. And he himself was born by God, but he is himself God. Anyway, who was naked upon the tree? It was not the body of our Lord that the light darkened when they fled, but men's eye, but men's eyes. For because the people quaked not, oh, we have a problem in regards to the connection. Because, uh, because, because the people quaked not, the, the earth quaked. Because they feared not, the creation feared. Thou smothest thy Lord. Thou also hast smitten upon the earth, and thou indeed liest dead. But he is risen from the dead, and gone, gone up, um, which was in bondage. You know, in regards to Isaiah 53, talks about uh, him releasing us from uh you know from the sins and that he carries our sins you know in regards to Isaiah 53 you can go read that again that's uh if i remember correctly that's the thing that the jews uh in their readings they skip you know they skip over uh, Isaiah 53 you know if if someone's you know wanted me to skip something you know i might be very interesting to actually read it anyway uh I have talked with Jews in Israel and had Jews actually, you know, come to the conclusion that this is talking about Yeshua, <laughs> uh, which, which is very interesting, you know, just letting them read it without any, you know. Um, so, um, so that's, uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, and having been bound for the sake of the race of Adam, which was in bounded bondage, having also been judged for the sake of him who was condemned, and been buried for the sake of him who was buried, and further on, this is he who made the heaven or heavens and the earth, and in the beginning, together with the Father, created man. So I see, this is he who made the heavens and the earth, and in the beginning, together with the Father, created man. So this is one of the places where you actually see this, uh, uh, well, he doesn't really, they, they don't really say that it's the Father is speaking to the Son at this point, but, you know, you can find uh, sources on that. It's, uh, anyway, who was preached by the law and the prophets, who was incarnate in the virgin, who was hanged upon the tree, who was buried in the earth, who rose from the dead and ascended to the height of heaven and seated upon the right hand of the Father. So, uh, yeah, so that's, I'm not sure if that's Melito or not, you know, in regards of the, but, you know, it sounds a lot of the same, but of course, you know, if the Christians, if the, you know, it, it, they might have, you know, it's, it, the truth stays the truth, right? You so, you know, um, let's see, of the Holy Meliton, Bishop of, of Attica. Uh, this is a small, uh, he that supported the earth was supported upon a tree. The Lord was exposed to ignominy with a naked body. God put to death the king of Israel slain. So that's interesting. Anyway, it was a little uh, reading in regards of Jesus being God, you know. And I think it's pretty, you know. Uh, and, and why? Well, you know, we should, you know, it, it's 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 just in the Bible, right, that, that, that Jesus is God. But, you know, I was led to some of these historical sources, I guess, because I was talking to the false or one of the, I had my, I had a main guy in the false witnesses that I had contact with, and uh, it led me to dig deeper in regards of because we had a lot of big conflict when I found out that, you know, when I when I met him, I didn't know that Jesus was God, uh, and then I found out Jesus was God, and. Uh, and from there on, there was a, you know, I guess a great gap between us uh, speaking to him. And, you know, some of the things that I told him and all that, uh, I, you know, then I went, you know, went home to verify the things. And, uh, you know, you can find that they believe that Jesus was God from the very beginning. You know, it's not it's not something new in regards to the Nicene Council or anything that some people will say. It's not just not true, you know. The God uh, Godhood of of Jesus Christ was not invented at the Council of Nicaea. Actually, I found it by reading the New Testament. Funny enough, it was there from the very beginning. <laughs> you know, and of course, you don't need to 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 read history to come to the conclusion that Jesus is God. But to you know, when people are saying, "Oh, well, this was something invented in the Council of Nicaea, three hundred and twenty-five," and then you just go back, you know, you go back to see if the if if, if what they believed before three hundred and twenty-five, and you can find pages upon pages and upon pages and upon pages that they absolutely believed that Jesus was God in the flesh. So if they believe that Jesus was God in the flesh, why? Yeah, I think it's just dishonest, you know. Um, that that's the thing. I think it's just dishonest, and it's it must be some some kind of you know. And it doesn't seem to me they can have the the spirit of truth when when they're not standing for the truth. Um. You know, they're pretty much educated into rejecting it. Anyway, that was in regards of Melito. Again, uh, I'm not sure about the two last. Uh, they still, you know, I think still sounded a little like Melito. But of course, um, you know, in regards of, you know, the things that he writes and all that. There are some other things in regards of Melito. He was one of these called Crudrillians or something like that in regards of keeping to the Bible in regards of Passover because there was this conflict in regards of... Let's see if we can take a camera. Oh. 
if it wants to do that see we go um there we go that's me with the jesus jesus as uh, sadly apparently i don't think it actually can turn it around uh, but it says, Jesus is God Almighty, Yehovah. It might actually be a little difficult to actually, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I need, uh, this is just, a, you know, this is my first model made of it, and it's not perfect and all that. I tried to, you know, make, a, you know, some fringes and all that. I'm not sure if it's entirely the right way, you know, I know the juice does it in a different way, uh, in regards of these uh, things in the, and that might actually also have been easier in regards of, um, but anyway, um, I looked into it. I'm still looking into things and all that. And, you know, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, as far as, as far as, you know, I, I looked into it in regards of the Greek translation and where they have like two times where they talked about this. And it just seems like I might be wrong. I might be totally wrong in regards of it. But anyway, so Jesus God Almighty is also on the back of the T-shirt. But I'm not sure if it actually should be smaller text, you know, because it might actually. I'm not sure if it's easy to read when people are like, you know, and uh, it doesn't really help now that I'm fat and all that. I, <laughs> in any case, um, yeah. So I just think it's 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 very uh, you know. Oops, let's see, can we move that? There we go, I had a little more beard at that point. But it's just very, very, very dishonest to, to you know, you know, you just don't see it in, you know, of course we have, have different groups, you know, the Gnostics and, you know, what was this, the Sabellians or something like that, apparently they had a big uh, issue with. But, what was it in regards with Sabellians? Yeah. Without any, like, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. They they just thought it was just, you know, same, uh, totally same, same. Uh, of course, that's something to, I guess, study at some point. But, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, all these, you know, just go by the Bible. It's just so much easier than to study what other people believe, you know, because we're actually standing for the, the, those doctrines. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's not bad weather. It's actually well, it could be better. Yeah, still some some gray. It's not totally blue, but there are some light as you can see. It's very nice. It actually, doesn't turn the camera around. You know, flip it around, and I don't think it has the feature for doing that. Um, I think it was Facebook that actually. I think what was it? What was the Facebook that had the feature of actually flipping the the sides around so if you actually have then you can see what it actually says so but you know this you know because it says in the fourth corners right and i was thinking in regards of clothing and at that time in regards of corners and a blanket maybe you can see some of the nations actually using like a just a blanket in some sense and wrapping the blanket around anyway, uh in any case that's that's how, how i did it you know I would have liked, yeah, I would like more of these t-shirts, um, a little better, you know, instead of, uh, but, you know, uh, you know, there's so many things to do and all that, and, uh, trying, you know, you know, using the time for trying to find out in regards of health things and all that, and, and by the way, one of these occultic practices, I can't remember what it's called, where you have, you know, the colors fixed in and so forth to make this balance and all that. And of course, in regards of the pyramid and all that, I try to, you know, hook it off, you know, because, you know, in regards of the truth movement and all that, and we have this, um, the Freemasons call it, call it the great architect. Of course, that great architect is not the true living God, it's Satan. And it goes back to the Holy See. You can find this uh, representing the Holy See as well, if I remember correctly. It's a little, uh, it's just some some time places, also in churches and so forward. Uh, but the idea, and also on the behind on the dollar bill, you know, if you look behind the dollar bill, you can find well the capstone, the top capstone, in some sense. Um, that's some of the mistranslations I also think because. Jesus is the corner one the 
satanic uh, capstone. But of course, it is you know it's not really that hard to control the whole world. If you just control the top, you can you know the triangle system just goes down. Um, if you control the top, you can control the whole triangle. And uh, that's probably triangles in the triangle goes down, 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 uh, becomes greater and greater and greater. And those in the bottom don't need to know what is in the top or what they know in the top, right? And those in second or third command doesn't know, need to know what the, the, you know, the director knows. And he might be controlled by some other place, you know, and then you have the whole triangle system uh, of all the movement also stir you in the direction of occult things and in regards to having health issues also stir, stir you into into occult things and stir you away so it, uh, you know you know finding out in regards to the medical mafia and the the whole you know the whole and his it's still his uh, you know roman kingdom that is you know just you know just follow the the leads i guess um but of course, when Yeshua returns, he will cast the so-called Pope into the Lake of Fire. And you pretty much have found where the world power is, you know. Um, the high priest, uh, Pontifex Maximus, Maximus, is still a title that the so-called Pope is using, the Antichrist is using. You know, the king of heathen is the Holy Spirit. So, um, yeah. So that is the, what shall we say, uh, the, uh, but the Holy, Holy Spirit is, you know, Yeshua said, I will not leave you orphans. I will send the Holy Spirit, you know, from the Father. So the Holy Spirit is in the, is in the Christian being uh, gone from death to life is now in the Son. And the Son is in the Father. And the Father and the Son is in the Holy Spirit who is in the believers. So, yeah. Um, anyway, in regards of, uh, in regards of, you know, in the Bible, you know, and people say, no, when you are born, you are, you know, when you become Christian, you, you know, you will. Well, we still, you know, Jesus is talking about, or Yeshua is talking about that, you know, these four different ways of actually people, you know, losing this faith and uh of matthew that's actually also an interesting thing in the new testament um and it seems to be a you know a false doctrine or something like that at least i have some issues with it. i think it goes back to paul but the this doctrine i think it's found in the i'm not in, i'm not sure if it's the god who uh moses but Matthew gets it correct uh, in the book of Matthew. He, you know, he says it's God that gives the law. And then also the doctrine is found in the book of Hebrews, which I think Paul wrote. Um, but that's that would be just be another point of that because this doctrine seems to be weird. According to the Torah and the law, uh, you know, the law and the book of Matthew as well. It was God that gave the law. It was God that wrote this. This weird doctrine that was actually found in the New Testament that angels gave the, you know. Uh, but at least it's found three times in the New Testament. I need to reread it at some point and, uh, you know, look it down or something like that. Uh, but, you know, there's so many things, so many things, because we haven't really been keeping up reading the Bible. It's hard to see if you don't read the Bible. If you, have, if you actually read the Bible, you will hit into you know, he hit into deceptions and lies so many times. And people trying to disturb you in this direction and that direction and all that. Uh, so, you begin to see something is, you know, uh, is and blah, blah, blah. And these weird doctrines that Moses was on drugs and, and that's why he saw this angel in the burning bush or whatever, you know, insanities that is out there. But, you know, many of these people haven't read the Bible. They just, you know, oh, that sounds pretty good, you know, and then they begin to promote it. Continues and continues and continues. It just seems to be a never-ending ride, I guess, of abominations. 
Now, in the beginning, you have a harder time to actually catching these lies and deceptions. But the more you read the Bible and study it and so forward, the easier it is to just, just, to just discount these lies. But it becomes easier for sure to, you know, when you know who Jeshua is, you can take all the false satanic versions out there and just trash them. Every time someone comes by with a false version of Yeshua and tries to, oh, this, you know, this and that and all that, you know, you could say, no, not, that's not Yeshua, you know. Well, then you don't, you know, the thing is you can learn about all the other versions out there, right? And never get close to the truth. Um, because you have nothing to really... But if you know the one true version, well, you can pretty much discount all the false versions. It's pretty much, you know. Some more of the uh, fifth book of Moses. It's really interesting. I think it's really interesting to this, you know, to... That's these gold nuggets in there. And, you know, then you, you know, fall into these gold nuggets and it's like... <gasps> That's a gold nugget, you know, and you, you, you know, and it's just like, oh, and that, that's wonderful. It was, you know, just a wonderful book, you know, it's, it's just wonderful. It's opening up. It's wonderful. You know, I, you, you, you know, uh, I must say in regards to the book of Leviticus, I really have, I really have a my hard time with the book of Leviticus. I think I have gone through it now, but I'm not in um, all these instructions for this and that, and I'm sure there must be some important things, you know. So, but it's just, I think it's it's uh, it's one of the, <laughs> well, for me anyway, it seems to be one of the the hardest books um, to get through, I guess. Um, yeah, all these rules in regards to the targets in there and some things that one can can use and all that, but it, I think it's it's it is um it's it is hard to. You know, absorb, absorb, what do you call it? Absorb all these things that is, you know, all these how to build this and that. And yeah, it's just, it, but yeah, I'm getting there, you know, I guess, you know, it's just, you know, you can, you know, but, you know, it's, it's easier to keep the fire going, you know, when you have found out tr tr things that are true. Uh, after studying a lot and pass it on to your children and they have a lot harder oh, uh, sorry they have a lot easier to actually keep that instead of you know if they just you know lose that information and the re-researching can take some time to re-research it to find out what is actually the truth of this and this and that but if you actually already you know if you had you know if you already had had all these gold nuggets from for example being taught from childhood it will help you to, you know, um, yeah, and you could then find more, maybe more gold nuggets and all that, you know. For example, in regards of which day is the seventh day of the year? Well, the, oh, sorry, the week. Well, the seventh day of the week is Saturday, and if we want to be totally on to our children, they don't need to use one and a half months studying this because I think I used one and a half months studying this subject because, you know, first that I found out, oh, the Saturday is actually the, the seventh day. Then people said, no, we can't be sure that it's actually is the seventh day and all that day and not the first day of the week, you know. And in regards of Saturday, or an XD, you know, from Friday, Sunday to Saturday, Sunday. Oh, so, so from Saturday, sundown, sorry. I'm, 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 I'm losing a little, yeah. Um, so if we can just nail that pretty much, you know, and of course, then you will meet people. Oh, it doesn't matter which day we, you know, when it's in regards of lawlessness, uh, you know, people always seems to go to Paul. Not anyone else. No, they go to Paul. Um, and many of them sadly go into total lawless lawlessness and begin to attack the people in, in nature. Um, you know, your children don't need to use one and a half month in regards to the seventh day, because if you have taught them the truth in regards to which day the seventh day is, and you know, uh, you know, and they might know that you did the research on this and all that. And actually, if you 
have done the research of one and a half month and and you know you can come to you know you can tell them your conclusions and where to look for the information if they want to know in regard to the seventh day so um but in any case if you teach them the truth in the bible and get closer to the things it's just and again the more mosquitoes we smash you know um the better because you know um then when we read it you know it just becomes easier to read and understand what is going on you know why not just teach them the new year in according to the bible now if we teach them the new year according to the bible they won't have issues in regards of that either so you see if they can just grow up with the doctrines of the bible which also we are told to teach our children on the bible and so forward and reject all the falsehood of rome so yeah and instead of reading for them these books of vanity or pagan you know but then maybe people will say, oh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, war and this and that. Yeah, look at what, you know, what people are sitting their children in that, right? And then you will tell me, oh, it's bad in regards to the Bible, right? You know, it's like people have this do double moral, you know, it's okay in regards to paganism and this and that and all that. But ah, don't, in regards to the Bible, oh, uh, you know, oh, they were all, you know, this like a, yeah, double uh, have a good one, all of you. I'll get listening to some more of the Bible and uh, hopefully, you know, get some gold nuggets. It seems to be the best day to research the, the scriptures to date. It just seems to be the best day, uh, you know, and it might have something to do that it's the blessed and sanctified and set apart day. It seems to be the day that really is a good day to research the scriptures, you know, where you, re you can, you know, it's, you know, it's just wonderful. Anyway, it's not to say that you can't research our master as well, right? Going to the synagogue, and, uh, and that was his custom. And when would he have been doing that? On the Sabbath. That was his custom, and they didn't have the technology and all that that we have. So if you wanted to listen or read the scriptures, you would go to a synagogue or... A house of meeting or meeting what is it called house of meeting where people met up to listen to God's word anyway have a good one of you hopefully it has recorded this you know I have um, I'll probably need to set up some settings and yeah anyway it's just uh, pretty much stalled on me it seems have a good one all of you and uh, Shabbat Shalom have a good day of rest that's still like four hours